Hi there, I'm Justin Pritchard, and you probably know that using your cruise control is more fuel efficient than not using your cruise control, but how much money could it actually save you? Well, in this video, I've got some numbers for you. Most drivers know that using their cruise control is a good thing, primarily because it helps you to save fuel and money, and also, many drivers notice regularly the drivers who do not use their cruise control because they're super annoying and their speed goes up and down and they don't let you pass them on two lanes and they slow down going up hills and generally just tick everyone off. But actually, there's another reason to be mad at drivers who don't use their cruise control, and that's because their slowing down and speeding up makes you slow down and speed up, and that costs you money. Cruise control is standard on almost every new car, and still, so few people use it. But how much money can it save you? I recently had a good pour over some information from the folks at Natural Resources Canada, or NRCAN, who are responsible for all things relating to fuel consumption, and I've got some dollar figures about cruise control usage, and a few dollar figures relating to some other easy fuel saving steps you can take at the wheel too. But let's start with three simple concepts. First, a vehicle traveling at a steady speed will use less fuel than a vehicle traveling while fluctuating around a certain speed because engines are less thirsty when they're running in a steady state and not revving up and down. Second, a vehicle traveling at a lower speed will use less fuel than a vehicle traveling at a higher speed, all else being equal. And third, the effects of the previous two concepts are more severe the larger the vehicle is. So failing to use your cruise control or driving 10 clicks an hour faster in one of these or these is going to waste a lot more gas and money than in one of these or these. And so let's look at how much money you can save. If you don't use the cruise control, you'll probably try to keep a steady speed, but likely you'll be fluctuating up and down around a given speed over and over again in a continuous cycle. According to NRCAN, drivers manually targeting an 80 km an hour cruising speed will likely cycle between 75 and 85 km an hour every 18 seconds or so. This uses 20% more fuel than setting your cruise to lock in at 80 clicks an hour. Here, you may burn 10 bucks worth of gas per hour with your cruise control on or 12 bucks without it. That's a savings of two bucks per hour just from pressing a button. If you're just the worst at manually holding a steady speed, you may fluctuate between 75 and 85 more frequently, perhaps every 12 seconds. In this case, you'll burn a whopping 48% more fuel than setting your cruise control to lock you in at 80. Here you could be tossing nearly 5 bucks out the window for every hour you drive. If your desired cruising speed is higher, or your fluctuations are more frequent or drastic, the wasting of money and fuel is even more severe. In fact, a really bad driver could feasibly be using 60% more fuel than one who uses their cruise control on the same drive. Ultimately, it's not hard to waste a whole bunch of fuel if you're trying to hold a steady cruising speed manually. Press that little button to use your cruise and you'll start saving money right away. Two or three or five bucks an hour can really add up. Plus, using the cruise control makes for a more relaxing drive and makes you less annoying to your fellow motorists too. How many hours do you drive per week, per month, per year? Crunch the numbers on your own using percentages, but in any case, you'll find the savings really add up over time. And remember, the bigger the vehicle you drive, the more dollars you stand to save by pressing that little button and turning the cruise control on. Using the cruise control if you aren't already is likely the biggest and easiest improvement you'll ever make to your fuel economy, though there are other ways to easily trim your gas bill too. An easy one is to just slow down even a little. Nobody likes that and everybody speeds pretty much. We almost all do it. But the difference in speed results in roughly the same percentage increase in fuel use here. So driving at 115 uses 15% more fuel than driving at 100, and driving at 120 uses 20% more. According to NRCAN figures, if it costs you $10 in fuel to drive a certain distance at 100 kilometers an hour, it would cost you $12 to drive that same distance at 120. That's like throwing a tuning out the window every 100 clicks. 
As another illustration, let's say a small car like this one and a big truck like this one each drive 50 clicks a day on the highway at 100 clicks an hour for a year. The following year, same thing, but they drive at 120 instead. In the small car, that's an added cost of nearly 200 bucks for going 20 clicks an hour faster. In the truck, it's nearly 350. Not huge dollars for some, but that's a few tanks of fuel at least. Maybe you're a higher mileage driver, like me, and I put on about 800 kilometers per week on the highway in many different vehicles. If they average, say, 10 liters per 100 clicks on the highway and I drive 100 clicks an hour instead of 120, then over the year that's a savings of over $1,000, well worth the extra roughly hour per week I'll spend in the vehicle and the reduced likelihood of a speeding ticket. So if you're a cruise control hater, maybe it's time to give that little button another try and consider setting it to maybe a slightly lower cruising speed too. It's a free feature on almost all vehicles that's highly effective, simple to use, and it can start saving you money right away. And all you've got to do is press a little button. Well, that's all I've got for this time. Thanks for watching. I'm Justin Pritchard. I like making videos on cars and driving. And if you like watching them, click on like and subscribe down below so you never miss a new upload. We'll see you next time.